Hey y'all, let's go ahead and we're going to talk about a couple moments today. That's what we were supposed to talk about in class if I would have been there. So let's go ahead and get started. When we talk about having a couple moment, that means that we're going to have uh, parallel forces that have a few things in common. All right, so we're going to have two parallel forces. And the first thing they have in common is they're going to have the same magnitude. All right, so that's the first thing. Second thing is they're going to go in opposite directions. And third thing, they're going to be separated by a perpendicular distance D. And we'll draw a picture in just a second. Okay, so if we were to draw a picture of that, let's say we have a force going to the left, and then I'm going to have a force with the same magnitude going to the right. All right, so the magnitudes are the same, they're in the opposite direction, and they're going to be separated by a perpendicular distance. Let's call that D. All right, so examples of this would be like a screwdriver. When you have the screw and you put the screwdriver in and you turn it, it applies forces on each end. And another one would be if you're holding a steering wheel. Let's draw a little steering wheel here. So it looks like that. And then you're trying to turn. So you would push up on this side while at the same time you push down. That's assuming you hold the steering wheel with both hands, you know. So that would be a couple moment also. All right, now if you look, since the forces are same magnitude in opposite directions, the resultant force will be zero, right? Because if you were summed up the forces, they would cancel each other out. All right, so the resultant force is zero. So that means that the couple only produces a rotation. All right, so it's going to produce a rotation, and that rotation is called the couple moment. So anytime we talk about a couple moment, that's what we're referring to. All right, so it's a case where we've got forces, they're going to cancel each other out, so the resultant force is zero, but we still have a rotation. All right, now we have a couple of ways of finding a couple moment. All right, so let's put two ways. Whoops, I should say two ways, two, to find couple moments. All right, so the first one is going to be to use scalars. All right, so let's call this the scalar formation. Now with this, you're going to use your regular scalar equation for a moment. So M equals F times D. So what you're going to do is, if we've got our force going down and then up, we've got a perpendicular distance here. All right. So F is going to be the magnitude of your force, and then D would be the perpendicular distance. And then, that's how you'd actually calculate the magnitude. The direction is going to be determined by the right-hand rule. All right, so that's kind of how we'll go about doing that. Now, let's do an example for this method, and then after that, we will cover the vector formation. All right. Okay, so here is our problem. This is number 471 out of y'all's textbook. I don't have the actual picture here, but I tried to draw it here. But y'all can look in the book and see the actual good picture. So what we've got, we have two couple moments that are acting on this beam. So the first one is right here. We have the 200 pounds. Notice we have one going to the left, then I have one going to the right. And then I have F right here. All right, so we got negative F and positive F. So that's the other couple moment. And these angles are both 30 degrees. Now what we want to do is we want to find the magnitude of F. 
so the magnitude of these forces, so that the resultant couple moment is 500, 450 pound foot counterclockwise. All right, and then it also asks where on the beam does that resultant couple moment act? All right, so we're gonna do the scalar formation on this one. And I'm gonna look at each couple moments separately. So let's go ahead and we'll start on the 200 pound uh, forces first. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna draw the beam again. And then we've got our forces. All right, so we got that 200 pounds up here. And then I've got it down here. So what we wanna do is we wanna do M equals F times D. All right, well, the magnitude of the force is going to be 200. All right, so we know that. And I'm going to call this M200. So force is 200, and then I need my perpendicular distance. All right, well, my perpendicular distance is right here. All right, so that's the D that I need because this is perpendicular. So that distance if we look, is given as 1.5. So let's go ahead and put 1.5 here. So we have 200 times 1.5. Now we need our sine. Okay, so is this positive or negative? Remember, counterclockwise is going to be positive. So if you look at these forces and you direct your right hand in the direction of rotation, then you should see that your hand curls around this way which is counterclockwise, so that would be a positive rotation. All right, so we're going to get a plus 300 pound foot. Okay, so that'll be our moment created by the 200 pound forces. All right, so pretty simple. All right, you just find the magnitude of the force, find the distance between. Key is to have that perpendicular distance. Now let's go to this one over here, one with F. So again, let's draw our beam. Make this one a little bit bigger. And now I've got the two forces. I got one here. And remember that we have a 30 degree angle here, and then I've got another one here. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this up into components. All right, so let's start at the top one. This is going down and to the left, so I would have a component going down that way. And then one going to the left. So this one going to the left would be F cosine 30. This one up here would be F sine 30. And then let's do the same thing for this lower one. So we have one going to the right. That's F cosine 30. And then we have one going up, which is F sine 30. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the moment between the components. All right, so you want to find those parallel components that are going to create a moment. Now, first of all, let's look at the F sine 30 forces. Now, are these going to create a moment? No. Those won't create a moment, right? Because there is no perpendicular distance between them. All right. So there's no moment created by those. So let's make a note on that. So F sine 30, no moment. So we don't need to worry about those. And then what about F cosine 30? Well, those do have a distance between them, right? And that distance is right there. All right, so that'll be the distance that we use. So we're going to have F cosine 30. And then I need my distance. My distance is going to be 1.25. And we know that from the original picture right there. All right, so now I have that, and now we need to look at the direction. So again, we're only focusing on this one here and this one here. So this one's going to the left, that's going to the right. So now which way do we think that rotation would be? 
And again, remember you can use your right hand to rule. So if you line your right hand, your fingers on your right hand up with this force here, and then you curl it around towards this direction, it's gonna go like that, which is counterclockwise. All right, so this is gonna be a positive. And if we simplify this, we get 1.083 times F. All right, so now we have these two moments here. We need to look at the resultant. All right, so we were told that the resultant moment should be 450 pound foot going in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so we're gonna have 450 pound foot counterclockwise. So that means positive 450, because it's counterclockwise, has to equal 300 plus 1.083F. And then from there you can solve for F, and we get 138.5, and that's pounds. All right, so there's your force. And last thing it asks for is where does the resultant couple moment act on the beam? Well, as you can see, the only thing that really matters is the distance between the forces. So really, it can act anywhere on the beam. So let's write that down. So our resultant couple moment can act anywhere on the beam because regardless of where it is, you're still gonna get that same rotation because all that matters is the distance between the forces. Okay, so that is the end of that one. Now let's start going over the second method, which is using vectors. And for the vectors, you really wanna use those for the 3D problems. 2D problems, you could use scalars or vectors, but for 3D, I definitely would use vectors. Scalars tend to be confusing for people. So let's go ahead and look at those. All right, so this is gonna be method two. All right, so we got method two, and this will be our vector formation. And remember our equation is M equals R cross F. It's the same equation we've had before. And I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can use vectors to find a couple moment. All right, so here's the first one. All right, so the first method is going to be to find the sum of the moments about any arbitrary point. So basically you just pick a point and you're gonna take the moment for each force about that point. So that'll be the first thing. So let's do a little example. So if I have a point O here, and let's say I have my forces, so I get negative F, and then I've got a just positive F over here, what I could do is find the moment about O for each one of these. So I could, whoops, actually let me hit the uh, erase button there. So I could draw a position vector from here to here. Let's just call that R A. And then I could draw another one from here to here. Call that R B. All right, so this would be like finding a resultant moment, which y'all have done before. Okay, so then our couple moment so MCO, so our couple moment, we're looking at point O here, is going to be RA cross with negative F, because that's the vector we're looking at, plus RB cross with positive F. All right, so this would just be what we've done before. So just find the moment for each of the force about some you know, arbitrary point that you pick out. All right, so let's do this example here for this first vector method. So remember the first vector method, we were gonna find the sum of the moments about any arbitrary point. All right, this is number 477 out of y'all's textbook. And what we wanna do is we wanna find the resultant couple moment. 
So you can see we've got two couples. I've got one right here, and then I have these F forces here. All right, now what we're gonna do is pick two points. So I'm gonna do it about two points just so you can see you get the same thing. So first, let's take the moment about point B. All right, these points aren't labeled in the textbook. I just made these points here. So point B is right here. All right, and we're gonna take the moment about B. And I chose this one first because it's got these two forces going directly through them, through that point, so we don't have to really worry about those. All right, so let's do that one first. So this will be the moment about B. All right, and we'll use this to get our result in. All right, first let's look at the force F, and let's just call that MF like that. Let's make it a vector. Now, for this one, what we need to do is we're going to basically find the moment about B. By the way, I think I pointed to this one, but I meant we're gonna use this one. All right, so what we need to do is get our position vector. So I need a position vector from B to the force. So that's gonna go from here. Whoops, it's gonna go from here to here. All right, that'll be my position vector. So that'll be, RBA. All right, so we got our RBA, and then we're going to cross it with that negative F. So let's see what we have with that. All right, so if we look, we've got our dimensions here, right? B is four feet from the or to the right. And then A, we go up 1.5 feet. So our position vector then, we're gonna have negative 4i plus 1.5j. And then I need to cross it with the force. So we have our 3, 4, 5 triangle here, and that's gonna give us negative 4 fifths fi minus 3 fifths fj. All right, and so now we have that. So we need to do this cross product here. And let's go ahead, and then once we do that, I'll tell you what value we're gonna use for F. So once we do the cross product, we're gonna have 12 over five times F, and that's gonna be K. All right, so that's from these two. And then we're gonna have plus six over five F K. All right, and that's from these two. So then that gives us 18 fifths times F K. And I forgot to write it up here, but F is going to equal 150 pounds. That would have been useful information, right? So now let's plug in the 150 here. So we're gonna have 18 over five times 150 K. So that equals 540. And that's gonna be pound foot. All right, so that's our moment uh, due to this force F. Now let's do the same thing for the 200 pound force. Now remember, I'm taking the moment about B, so I wanna use this 200 pound force. All right, so for that one, I need my position vector. All right, so I'm taking a moment about B, so I'm gonna go from B up to C. And if we do that, that's gonna be 1.5J, because we know this distance here is 1.5. And then we're gonna cross that with the force, which is 200I. So that's gonna give me negative 300K, and that's pound foot. Now I gotta find the resultant. So for the resultant, all we need to do is add these two moments. All right, so I'm gonna have 540K minus 300K, which is gonna give me a positive 240K. So that's my resultant. All right, so it's positive, that means it's counterclockwise, and it's rotating about the Z axis. All right, because we had X, Y, and then Z is coming out of the page. 
So we're rotating about that axis that's coming out of the page. All right, so that's what we get if we take the moment about B. Now we could do the same thing. We could find the moment about point C, so right here. And we would get the exact same thing. All right, so let's prove that. For this next part, All right, so if we do that, then for this one, scroll back up here. If we're taking the moment about this point right here at C, I have to look at this force F, this 200 pound force, and then this negative F here. All three of those are gonna cause a moment about C. All right, so my resultant then is going to be the moment of negative F plus the moment due to positive F plus the 200. All right, so we need to find all three of those. So let's do the negative F first. All right, so with that one, let me scroll back up here. What I need is the position vector from C over to A, essentially. So that's gonna be negative 4i. And then I'm going to cross it with the force vector, which is negative 4 fifths Fi minus 3 fifths Fj. That gives me 12 over 5 times F times K, and I'll plug in the value for F later. Then we do the same thing for positive F. All right, so positive F is right here. So now I need the position vector from C to B. All right, so that's going to be a negative 1.5j. Then we cross it with the force, which this time is going to be 4 fifths Fi plus 3 fifths Fj. So now once we do the cross product for that, we get 6 over 5 Fk. And then last one, the one with the 200 pound force. So let's look back up here. So here is C, so I need to use this 200 pound force right here. So that's gonna be negative 200 I. My position vector is gonna be the negative 1.5 J again. All right, so we have that. That's gonna give me negative 300 K. And now all I need to do is sum all of these up. All right, and we need to replace F with 150. All right, so our resultant force then is going to be 12 over 5 times 150. That's K plus 6 over 5 times 150. K and then minus 300 K. Which that is going to equal 240 K just like we had right here, all right? So it doesn't matter which point you choose, you're gonna get the same thing, all right? This point up here had less work though, right? So something to keep in mind. All right, so we have one more way to use vectors. This way is gonna be the shorter way. And what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna use a position vector between our forces. All right, so this is a new part of the notes here. Okay, so this is vector formation method two, essentially. Now, essentially what we're doing is we're gonna be finding the moment about a point on the line of action of one of our forces. All right, and this is going to be an easier one. So let's just put this as the shorter method. 
All right, so this is the one that I would recommend that y'all do. All right, so let's look at that same example we just did. So we'll draw it out again, but it's going to be that same problem we just looked at. All right, so let me draw it out and I'll be right back. All right, so let's look at this example. Same example we had before, and now we're going to use the method where we go in between the forces. All right, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and label our points again. I forgot to put those on here. So this was our point A. I called this one C, and this one was B. And let's write out our coordinates. So A is 0 and 1.5. B is going to be 4 and 0. C is 4 and 1.5. All right, so that should give us what we need. So now let's get started. We're going to look at each couple moment, and then we'll get the resultant by adding them up. Now let's go ahead and look at these forces right here. All right, so we have negative F and positive F. Oh, I cannot draw with this marker here. All right, now what we want to do is basically we're going to find a moment about a point that lies on the point of action of one of the forces. All right, so that means we need to pick one point and then draw a position vector to the force like be a different color like this right here all right that should be going to point a but y'all know i can't draw it so let's try again there we go so we're going to have this one all right so that's going to be our r so basically it's r b a all right so that's what we're going to have and remember this was a four before i erased it so that's going to be our position vector. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the moment about this point B. Point B lies on the point on the line of action of this force right here. And then we'll be using this force for our calculation because we're pointing at that force. All right. So let's go ahead and look at that. So this is going to be the moment for the force, couple moment. And we're going to have RBA, and then we're going to cross it with negative F, right? So this is negative F, like that. And let's put a note. We want to use the force that your position vector points at. All right, so R is pointing to this negative F, so that's the one we're going to use. Now, RBA, I need to go from here to over here. So that means that RBA is going to be negative 4I plus 1.5J. All right, so again, our coordinates of A would go first. So we'd have 0 minus 4I and then 1.5 minus 0J. And then we cross with our force vector. So that's going to be negative 4 fifths Fi minus 3 fifths Fj. So then with that, when we do the cross product, what we're going to get is 12 fifths Fk plus 6 over 5 Fk. All right, so this term, this first term here is from this one multiplied with this one, and this one is from 1.5 times this. So now we get that now. We can simplify that to be 18 over 5 times F, and we know F is 150. So let's plug that in. So that gives me 540K. Now we're going to do the same thing for the 200-pound couple moment. So again, what we want to do is we're essentially taking a moment about a point that lies on the point of action of, on the line of action of one of these forces. All right, so you could pick whatever point you want. So I'm going to say I'm doing the moment about C. So I'm going to have my position vector go from C down to this 200 pound force here. So if we do that, then what we're going to have is essentially RCB cross with 
Let's row 200 F here. So it's going to be crossed with negative 200 I. All right, and then our RCB, since we're going down 1.5 feet, is going to be negative 1.5 J. So we have negative 1.5 J cross negative 200 I. And that gives me negative 300 K. All right, so we could do it that way. And then we could go through and find the resultant. So we need to add these two up. All right, so we're gonna have 540K minus 300K. And that gives you that 240K and that's pound foot. Now keep in mind you could do the other cross product here and here. So let's kind of write down what that would be. Let me draw the picture again too. Okay, so now that I drew, drew the picture again, let's go ahead and look at this. So let's say I wanted to do a different moment. All right, so on this one up here, I did RBA cross with negative F. All right, I didn't have to do that one. If I wanted, I could have done this position vector like this. So this would be RAB. And then I could cross it with this force here. All right, so that would be another option. All right, so we can switch our direction and do it that way. All right, and you'll get the same exact result. And then for the 200 pound uh, couple moment, for this one up here, we went from C to B. So essentially we we're finding a moment about C. Well, now we could also take the moment about B. And if we did that, our position vector would go up this way so we'd have RBC, and then now we're pointing at this force, so I'd have cross positive 200I, all right? So if you went through and worked these out, you will find that you get the exact same thing we got up here. All right, the key though, is you always wanna use the force that you're pointing at with your position vector. So that's the key. All right, and this method typically is going to be quicker than the other one where we just picked an arbitrary point. All right, because you're typically doing less work. All right, guys, so that's the end of that. When I get back in class, I'll kind of ask y'all if y'all have any questions, but hopefully this will get y'all started on the homework. All right, guys, I'll see y'all next time.